What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, just like always, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now, in the beginning of November, looking to kick off this month very, very strongly. And as you read in the title, we're going to be talking about you guys and my brief opinion on on whether or not I see these markets continuing this run that they've been on. So all I ask from you is if you enjoy the video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and feel free to join our 100% free of charge Discord group chat and Facebook group. Those are linked down below in the description box, as well as all of my other social media platforms. So guys, let's get into it right now, starting off with the SPX here, the S&P 500. Very, very strong day today. This is mostly due to a strong jobs report, October jobs report that came out today. And off the top of my head, I believe we saw 118,000 jobs in the month of October and unemployment, uh, the unemployment rate ticked up a bit to about 3.6%. So that is what really fueled this market today. And again, you can see this is up nearly 30 bucks at the close, up 0.97%. We hit another all-time high here at three $3,066.95. And pretty much today was one of those days that we saw a lot of the action pre-market hours. As you guys can see here, you know, we closed yesterday at about 3037, yesterday being Thursday. And we actually gapped up to the uh, the open here, which is Friday, up to about 3050. So we saw a sizable 13-point gap up. Then we saw another big push here of about the same, roughly 13 points. And then the rest of the day, guys, honestly, although we didn't dip down, we we were pretty much just coasting around that 3060 level. And as you guys can see, again, we closed at an all time high, very strong close on the SPX, by the way, at again, 3066. So at this point, obviously looking back at that four hour chart, there's no really resistances that I'm looking at because we are really at an all time high at this point. So all we can look at is, you know, the previous all time highs, which at this point are acting as support levels. So what I'm looking at in terms of that, so let's say the S&P does pull down, where could it find some sort of support? You know, the, the general area I'm looking at is probably around 3048 to about 3050, right? And why am I saying this level? Well, if we zoom in a bit to the five day, five minute, you guys can see that level is really an old resistance where we saw about four or five rejections and ultimately we gapped up above it today, which makes it a new support. So watch out for that level if the S&P does see a cool off period here in the short term, which honestly, guys, I wouldn't be surprised because the RSI is overbought. We've been running up for the past couple of weeks. If we cool off a bit, see a bit of a retracement, uh, retracement down to this level, bringing that RSI down a bit, that could be, um, you know, the S&P tune tuning up for the next rally up to another all-time high. So let's take a look quickly at the SPY. SPY tracks the S&P. This hit an all-time high, $306.19. And really the technicals are similar here, right? Uptrend is intact. We, we again have no resistances here. We can pretty much only look at old all-time highs, um, you know, as new supports, which in this case is going to be around $304.60-ish cents, $304.70. So, SPY again tracks the S&P. A lot of people use this as a gauge on the market. And yeah, it's a beautiful uptrend, all time highs, all of that good <clears throat> stuff here. So going to the Dow Jones industrial average, we filled that gap, guys. Yes, we filled the gap. I've been talking about this on the channel. We finally filled the gap. Now we have one more step to break to get to those all time highs. And what gap am I talking about? Well, we've been trading with 27k to about 27.4, which is around a 400 point gap here over the past couple of days, right? And I've been talking about how, you know, if we fill the gap, 
Obviously, if we break that gap, once we fill it, we're going to be at all-time highs. And that's, on a technical basis, what the Dow Jones needed to do to get to the all-time highs. So now that we've filled the gap this upcoming week, I'm waiting to see, do we gap up? And I personally think we're so close at this point that, at least in the short term, I think this is going to break up here to the all-time highs, especially because, guys, honestly, there's a lot of optimism right now in the stock market. Trade worries... You know, although they're in the back of people's minds, you know, we have some optimism, especially from the media surrounding the trade war, right? You know, a partial agreement may come. We already got that one about like one, two, three weeks ago. I forget exactly when that was, but it was here in the, you know, in the recent uh, past. And, you know, again, jobs or the jobs report came in very, very well. A lot of the big companies like Apple, Facebook, they blew earnings out of the water. A lot of other big companies are doing well as well. So I think this could end up fueling the really the stock market up, especially the Dow Jones here to that all-time high. So let's go to the NASDAQ, guys, and um, really take a look at what this one's looking like here. This is up 73 points right now, up 0.9%. And this one hit an all-time high here at 81.68. And judging off this four-hour chart, again, no resistances because we're at all-time highs at this point. Next support that we could be going to if we see a pullback, in my opinion, is going to be around 8120. So roughly about a 40 point pullback, I think could be healthy here, um, you know, on the NASDAQ. And you can see it here on the hourly chart a bit better. You know, we're getting overbought on the RSI. You saw it on the four hour chart, you know, here on the hourly chart as well. We're not extremely overbought, but we are getting to that 70 threshold, which is very overbought. And anything above 70 is extremely overbought. So, you know, if we do get that pullback here, it's not going going to be a crazy pullback that, oh my goodness, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, they're going in downtrends. No, it's a healthy pullback. We might hold that 50 SMA, again, that 8125 level. This could be a spot where we can consolidate and then maybe just continue this rally and hit an all-time high again, right? So that's kind of what the markets are looking like right now. Very, very strong performance, guys. The stocks, a lot of the stocks I track, they're at all-time highs. You know, Apple went up 7 bucks today. Facebook up nearly $2 today. Amazon up 14 bucks. A lot of these large caps, you know, Microsoft has been killing it. You know, these are just driving up the stock market at this point. And to answer the question in the title, do I see more... Uh, all-time highs to come here in the near future? Do I see the markets continuing to go up? And the truth is, yes. I already briefly kind of answered the question a couple of minutes ago, but there's a lot of optimism right now. A partial trade deal. We may get another partial trade deal. Jobs reports looking good. Corporate earnings, some weren't really good, but a lot of the large caps did pretty good. They, they beat on EPS. They beat on revenue. So at least in the short term here, I do see these markets continuing to rally. But one thing that can rock the markets, which we all have experience with at this point, or maybe most of us have experience with at this point, is if the trade negotiations get sour, we get more tariffs, they really publicize it on the media very negatively, which will instill fear in others. This is going to be one thing that can really bring down this market right here. And really, it can happen very quickly, guys. We've seen it in the past before. One tweet comes out, we get tariffs, and the market drops 3% in a day, 4%. This has literally happened in the past couple of months. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Although everything's great right now, markets are pushing up. I think in the short term, we can continue pushing up here. Just realize that this can change in the blink of an eye. Have cash ready. That's what you should do in my personal opinion, right? You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I have cash ready. So when that does happen, when we do see a sizable correction here, I'm going to be ready and hopefully you guys will be ready as well to buy into stocks as they get cheaper. Because right now, a lot of the major stocks out there, they're pretty expensive, right? So let's get into you guys very quickly, then we'll talk about what I did. And honestly, today, guys, today was more of a uh, sit back and watch type of day for me, right? Um, 
you know, I, I'm in McDonald's, I'm in Facebook, I didn't really change much in these positions, Facebook, I'm up a little bit on the position, McDonald's, I'm down a little bit on the position, because McDonald's did end up seeing um, a little bit of a correction here, we got rejected at 197, sold off, held 193, uh, that's pretty much what we did today in terms of McDonald's, right, and I'm in at about 194, uh, like 50-ish, didn't buy any more shares of McDonald's, I do plan on adding more, I was looking to add Add more today if we were to break 198 but the fact that we didn't we got rejected really I didn't do much to this trade right I'm just simply holding those initial shares and the Facebook position that I got into yesterday really is because of their positive earnings their run up to 200 bucks and their pullback the next day to 192 opening up that $8 margin and really I see this as a dip buy because the momentum that pushed us to 200 bucks what did that do that pushed us a to a higher high and B into the next channel which is between 192 and up to about 205 and again we got the pull down we held 192 nicely as a support yesterday so I figured I buy in and again off the top of my head right now I forget exactly where I built the position I believe it was um, 192.60 192.70 right around here and you guys can see I'm up a little bit on that I'm, you know I'm up about um, like a couple uh, cents like probably 50 60 cents on the position maybe upwards of uh, actually more towards about a dollar on my shares nothing crazy so you know simply today guys I was holding you know uh, uh, Facebook McDonald's no day trading although you guys would have been a very good day trade here <clears throat> today didn't end up doing much in terms of that. So let's just get into you guys and good old you guys, guys. This one took a dump, and this just goes to show, you know, how risky it is to really play you guys, D guys, and honestly, all leveraged ETFs and ETNs at that because they move up one day and they move down the next day, and then all of a sudden they reverse and push all the way back up. So it's kind of all about timing here, and you can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? Nearly. 18 bucks yesterday, literally yesterday pre market. We sold all the way down to nearly 1480, which is a it's a percentage loss of about 15 16 percent. And then all of a sudden, today, guys, we gained almost all of that back up 15, 13, 12, 15 ish percent up to where we are now at about 17 bucks, all in the matter of two days. So, if you were to time this correctly, you know. <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me, you know, buy here, sell here, you could have made... <clears throat> a ridiculous amount of money, right? But at this point, I'm seeing this as a pretty bullish move. And let me explain why on a technical basis, I believe that. So taking a look at the 30 minute chart, well, the first thing I want to point out is the close above 1670. That is really bullish in my opinion, because we held that the uh, previous couple of days once here, and we tried to the previous day before that, but ultimately dumped below it. But we held it the next day, again, as you guys can see, and then we ended up pushing to that high. Then we slowly sold off, well, not really slowly, very aggressively sold off, but we still held that 180 SMA here on the 30-minute chart as a support at a higher low. So that was a very good bounce this morning, pre-market, and honestly heading on to the rest of the day today for you guys and at this point I was thinking okay you know if we break above 1670 hold that at the close that's going to be bullish because that could be giving us a sign that this thing wants to go to 1820 you know this upcoming week whether that's Monday Tuesday whatever it may be the fact that we closed here I could see this one running up another six seven percent you know, um, you know, really in filling up that gap to 1825. But the thing that scares me and why I don't really hold these over the weekend is this thing can maybe do something like this, go back to 16 bucks and then maybe go to 18 bucks. That's the thing. So it's really risky because Ultimately, I do think it's going to go a bit higher than 18, maybe 20 bucks. But before we get there, this thing could go down to 15 bucks, back up to 16, 17, pull down again, then get up to 18, 19. The thing is, we don't really know, and it's really risky because 
It's so volatile. So at this point, that's kind of my thoughts. Bullish close, but still, this thing can really go either way next week, which again is why I don't really hold these things um, over the weekend. And natural gas in general, guys, you know, this is looking very, very volatile as well. We closed under 272, which is not really bullish in my opinion, because we need to get that break and honestly the fill up to 276, which is the next gap. And if we do get that and ultimately a break above 276 and really getting into the 280s, that's going to be what we need to see for you guys here in the short term to really hit that $20 plus target that I do think it can, you know, as, you know, as natural gas gets more and more bullish as it continues to run up here. So overall, that's what I think in terms of uh, you guys, natural gas, very volatile, but ultimately I do think it's going to continue to rally up here, um, whether it's next week, the week after, or maybe even the week after that. So let's quickly talk about some stocks, guys, and some that I'm very, very interested in buying this upcoming week. The first one being ticker symbol ATVI. And why am I liking ATV, guys? Well, Brief news, let's take a look at this live news tab to show you. We got some announcements about two major video games at BlizzCon, as you guys can see down here. And let me show you uh, uh, um, the games here. It was Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2. This is what this stock has been kind of waiting for. Call of Duty also released this past week, and honestly... I am a Call of Duty fan. I've been a Call of Duty fan for such a long time, since 2010, Black Ops 1. Those That really is my favorite game of all time. But now, this new Call of Duty, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the 20, obviously it's 2019 version, this game is amazing, guys. It sold 600 million copies in the first three days opening weekend, and I honestly love it, right? I actually got off of the Call of Duty bandwagon for a couple of years, you know, have really got the past two three but once i saw this one i was like okay i need to give it a shot i need to get back onto the bandwagon here start playing it a bit more because again i love call of duty for 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 for, for over a decade at this point right so i got it i love the game guys and obviously, that's not a reason to buy a stock because you love the game that it produces, but the numbers back it up, right? 600 million bucks in three days. These are just positive catalysts that I think can fuel Advi here, as well as an earnings report that's coming up on the 7th of November, which is this upcoming week. So I'm kind of watching these multiple variables here. Again, all these new games, Call of Duty, earnings report. I think this one can ultimately, if it does well on the earnings here, ultimately fill the the gap up to 62.50, but I think that'll probably be a slow move, right? This might be about a two, three month uh, period to get up to that level if it ends up getting up to that level, but I think this is going to be worth swing trading. It's on my swing watch list, and again, I'm watching all of those different variables because they can move the stock. So, AbV is another one here, guys, that reported earnings today, and we can see this one successfully filled the gap up to 81.50. Honestly, broke above it. Now is holding 81.50.82 as a new support. So, this is looking good. Now, we have to draw out some levels here that really we can go to next because this thing has been so so freaking bullish, right? 84.20, 84.30. That's kind of where I'm looking at next here. Coupled with their earnings, let's take a look at this, guys. Live news. Let's scroll down here a bit. Okay, we can see guidance. Um, um, 882. This is this EPS. Yes, 882 uh, to 892 versus the 890 estimate. So of course, if they hit that higher end, that's going to be better for the stock. But let's see the earnings here. If I can find it for you guys. If not, it's okay. Okay, here it is. EPS beats 233 versus 230 estimate. Very very good sales beat as well. 8.48 billion versus 8.38 billion. So this overall did very well in terms of earnings. The brief earnings in terms of EPS and revenue that's driving up the stock. We're going to be watching. I'm going to be watching Abby here over the next couple of days. So what other ones do I want to share with you all? We obviously have KHC. You know, this is one that's really breaking up here due to a pretty positive earnings report. Um, Tesla is another one that I want to mention. And honestly, guys, I'll go into a lot more stocks here on Sunday's video. So if you guys want to actually let me know a stock down below in the comments that you want me to analyze for Sunday's video, 
video, let me know down below. Drop that comment and I'll get to it. But Tesla here, you know, 320, 315, uh, not really 320, 315, 310 seems to be acting as a support. Maybe in the short term, we can move up to 320 here. That's kind of where we're trading in right now. But ultimately, I'm not really looking to trade Tesla at this point. Another one that's just been ripping, guys, is NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA. This one's pulling down now. $200 could be a potential swing trade entry here if we do hold that 50 SMA up to about 208 bucks. I'm thinking that could be a reasonable play of about 3-4%. Watching that, um, I definitely think it's worth it. So that's really it for this video. I don't want to keep you guys too long. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me, and don't forget to join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.